In this video, we're gonna install some sauna tubes. And we're gonna do it right now. These are sauna tubes. They're four foot tall. They come in eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. It all depends on what the uh, local building department requires. For my eight by four deck, what's required is 10 inch, four feet down. So basically what you do is you dig a hole, put the tube in, backfill it, and fill it with concrete, and you're done. And if that's all you needed to know, thanks for watching. If you wanna see a ton more details and see me actually install these things, stick around. So I'm building this deck, and the first thing I wanted to do before I dug the sauna tubes is set my ledger board. I just tacked it in with a couple nails in case things go wrong and I have to move it but I think I'll be pretty good. Um, I'm gonna flash it afterwards, so don't worry about that, that it's not flashed. The reason I want that set is so that I can take a square and square it off of the house to tell me where these sauna tubes are going. And I estimated just so they could come out and mark the water line. I estimated that it was going right there. Um, so water line's marked, I'm plenty far away from that. One's going right there, and one's going right there. And then posts like this will sit on top of that concrete on either side and support the front of this deck. So in order to accurately dig for the sauna tube and put it in the right place, like I said, I wanna square off the deck and I have my ledger board and this four by four is going to represent the four by four that will be supporting the front of the deck. There's gonna be another board going here. In fact, there's two boards because I'm gonna do a double this way. And then picture the board going this way. This is going to attach to the side of that board. So what I wanna do is take my four by four here and I've already marked the center of the board and I wanna mark that mark right there because I wanna dig that sauna tube dead center of where this four by four is going. Now I can take my square and put it up against the house like this. And since I'm gonna be working alone, I'm gonna attach this in any way I can so that it's square up against the house and I can check it periodically. Now I'm gonna put a nail right here, in the center of that line take a line, in my case it's a chalk line, and attach it to that nail. And now I'll be able to take that chalk line and hold it over here and make sure it's square against the frame and square, and that'll give me a good idea of the center of where I want to dig. And see, I gotta move over to the right a little bit. So I move that over a little bit, and now you can just measure how far out you want to come and just keep checking it. You can actually rent a really uh, nice machine that will dig these. They're gas powered, but I'm going to be careful around this water line. I'm going to dig this first one by hand and see what we want to do with that one. But I'm going to start with just a shovel. Uh, by code here in Massachusetts, these need to be four feet down. And sometimes they have you do what's known as a big foot which on a bigger deck you might have to. It's about two feet by two feet. So you have to dig a big hole and then back fill it. These ones go straight down. 10 inch sauna tubes, four feet down. Let's begin. the point where it's getting hard to dig this with the shovel. It's now about two feet down maybe. So I'm gonna switch tools. It's a little rocky, but no huge rocks yet. Knock on wood. I'm gonna use a post hole digger. And this one's a little different than you typically see. Typically, you have basically the same as this on the other side, where this one is a little different, where you 
drop this lever and it scoops. Really old school, but awesome. I don't even know if they make them anymore. But in my opinion, it works way better than your typical post hole digger. And if you need to break some stuff up, this is the way to go. This is called the San Angelo bar. It's heavy and it'll loosen stuff up for you. And then you can lift it all out with a post hole digger. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail about digging because it is pretty simple. Of course, if you live on a mountain or if you are trying to do this in the winter and you have frost, you're gonna have a hard time and you might need something more than hand tools. But this is your typical situation, somewhat rocky soil, and the best thing to do is use that bar with the combination of the post hole digger. I have even before used that bar to smash up slate and all kinds of different situations and use the shop vac to pull the dirt out of the hole. And it works. It sounds silly, but if it works, it works. Now, the rock I'm dealing with is right at the edge. So I'm gonna try and break it up with this. But if I can't do that, I'm just gonna scoot this in a little bit. Now, if it's a huge rock and it's right in the middle, sometimes there's not much you can do, but cut the, the sauna tube, um, check with your building department and everything, but pour on top of that, that big rock. This one, I think I'll be able to just scooch this over just a little bit. Hope I don't run into any more. So that's all right that it's up a little bit from from here. I'm actually going to add some more soil to this anyways, um, but a little exposed concrete is fine with me. I'll just make it the same on the other side. backfill that all the way and I'm just gonna kind of pack this as I go Check it one more time Make sure it's level tighten it up and square it and you can see I am pretty much center right there and you can be a little off it just looks better if it is dead center so I'm trying to get as close as possible and with this I want it to land at about 44 center that looks pretty darn good one down one to go. This honestly only took me about 45 minutes. Um, that was the biggest rock that I hit. It's a little rocky, but it was a little rocky, but not too bad. So I'm just gonna dig this one by hand as well. In here. There we go. That's the kind of stuff you do when you work alone all the time. I need friends.
level. That's what this is called. Hold it tight. That looks pretty good. So that tells me that this height is even with that height. So now I can backfill this because those measurements are good too. Okay, put my plywood on here. Cover those up, wait for an inspection. Inspection is complete, passed obviously, um, and I got a lot of rain last night and I am glad that I covered these because once water gets into these, they start to soak in and become really flimsy. So I can't wait any longer to pour these uh, because I've actually seen these collapse uh, with torrential downpours. So I don't want that to happen. So I gotta get to pouring these. So definitely keep that in mind. If you have to wait, don't wait long. You can see this one's already kind of getting squished. So yeah, can't wait any longer. So here's what I'm gonna need. A hose, a shovel, a hoe, knife, hammer, something to mix in, and a piece of wood about that big. And of course, concrete. I got this high strength concrete mix and hopefully it didn't get too wet. We'll find out very soon. I don't really want to pick up another eight bags. Um, these require, it'll say right on the side of them, um, how much to use. And per foot, per, per cubic foot, it was about point, or it said 0.9 bags of 80 pounds. So eight bags should do both these tubes. So before I put a bag in here, I like to add, add some water. And I'm gonna add a bag, add more water, mix it up, and do one bag at a time. So this is just about the consistency that you want. This one might be a little watery, but that's okay because the water is going to float to the top after we pour this. Just mix it up really good. And we're ready to pour. All right, let's see how good my aim is. Yeah, this is where it helps to have two people. One to work the wheelbarrow and one to kind of guide the concrete in. That's okay. Spilling is gonna happen. Just try not to scoop up too, too much dirt. It's okay if there's a little in there. Since this wheelbarrow has kind of a wider front, uh, it's harder to pour. So I'm just gonna scoop. Less messy. Now, as you go, it's important to use your piece of wood to just kind of work it in there, fill in any voids, let the air and the water travel to the top of the mix. Notice how all the water is starting to rise. Quite a bit of water in this mix, and that's okay. And I just need a little bit more, maybe one or two scoops. And I'm out, so I gotta mix up a whole bag. Now as I fill this, I'm gonna overfill it, and you're gonna see all that water spill out. And 
good. Now I'm just gonna lightly, very lightly tap this. And this is gonna also help to get any air bubbles out. You're gonna wanna tap it a little harder than I am. Uh, the water got to my sauna tube, so it's a little delicate. Um, but you you basically want to vibrate it uh, to move that concrete around to let those air bubbles come up to the surface. Now I can take my board. And of course these sauna tubes got wet, so I gotta be careful. Just nice and easy. that nice and flat and we'll come back to that I'll work on filling the other one I found a helper As the level of this goes down a little bit, I just add some more and do the same thing with my board very carefully. Let all that water come out as it rises to the top. And at this point, some people will put a bolt in here, an anchor bolt. It kind of has a hook on the bottom, usually a half inch bolt. I don't do that. I attach the bolt afterwards because it always ends up working out where it doesn't line up and it drives me nuts so doing it afterwards is just fine if you want to do it that way you can as this dries up it's going to start to look a little something like this and unfortunately because of the water the sides are going to look like that but it's not going to be perfect but it's definitely going to hold that deck up and i just tapped around the sides again and more water and air came up so you might just want to babysit these a little bit and keep doing that as this cures a little bit maybe every half an hour or so after you do that for an hour or two you can leave it alone and let it cure and don't build on top of it for at least 24 hours and you see how the concrete is lower than the sauna tube itself that is totally fine and leaving this water there is totally fine as well. Water actually helps cure concrete, so if it is a really hot day, you could spray it down lightly with some water, put some plastic over it, and let it cure that way. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you got some tips from it. If you want to do this yourself, you don't need to rent any fancy machinery if your situation is similar to this. If you want to see more videos like this, you can click here-ish and here-ish. Stay tuned for more deck build videos because I got a couple coming and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.